Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I would like to cover the topic Git or better said version control system. What I'm using is Git so I would primarily talk about Git. This tutorial is not especially for Godot but I will also cover a little bit how I use Git especially together with Godot but it's more like a small introduction to Git or versioning systems in general and I hope you enjoy it. So let us get into it. So you can find uh, all your information you need about Git on git-scm.com. So Git is a fast version control system and it, it is decentralized. That means we can use it without a server, but we can also use it with a server. So you can download it here for Windows and of course for Mac or Linux, whatever you would like to do. And what this provides to us is a command line tool, which is called git bash for Windows, for example. And there we have now a Unix shell in Windows, which is uh, quite nice to use. And here we can also use our git commands. So there are of course some tools like GitHub or Bitbucket, which are more handy to use than the command line stuff, but we will cover it later and I will show you just the basics for now on the command line so we get a general understanding of the concept of Git or versioning control in general. So all I have to do now is to create a deer with uh, my epic game. Afterwards I step into this and I call git init. With git init I initialize an empty git repository. So what it means is that my folder is now in git repository and we can add different stuff to it. So what I want to do is I want to create a readme md file and now we can use git status to see that we have an untracked file which is the git readme. Afterwards I add this file and I call again git status to see I have added the file there are no commits yet and if I would like to commit it I use git commit and say this is my initial commit. So what the commit command does is it uh, commits the file to our repository and it saves it in the repository. So if I call git log for example I can see now from my repository that there is one commit and this is by myself so this is uh, roughly the date is and the topic I have just written before. What I have done now is I have a folder here with my git repository and it stores already the file and my commit. But everything is now just on my local machine. What I would like to do is I would like to distribute it to a server or a cloud system so my collaborators or my team can also use it. So for that I need some kind of a cloud server or yeah, another repository which is a remote repository and then I can push my changes to the repository. So what I would do is I would do for now git push to push it to a remote server. But as I said already, we haven't a remote server right now. So we can push it and everything is locally. So if we would like to have a remote repository, there are quite some options. There is for example git hub, there is GitLab, there is Bitbucket. These are the, I think these are the three uh, biggest cloud services for Git repositories. Of course, you can always host your own server with all of these. So you can host your own Git, GitHub server, you can host your own GitLab, you can host your own Bitbucket server, or you even have just a Linux server with just Git on it and it works fine. So everything is uh, possible. For this tutorial, I will just show you the basics and I will create a new repository here on my GitHub account. You can just create yourself a GitHub account. You just register yourself and afterwards you can just create them and yeah. I just say this is my epic game. I give a short description. It's at the epic game. I say it's private. You can also make it public for other people, of course. Then I create this repository. What this means is I created now a repository on this cloud services from GitHub. And what it says to me is now I can do these steps I have already done. So we have git init already done, we have added, we have the first commit done. But now what is interesting, we can now add this remote as our remote branch. So let us do this. I add it as a remote and now I am able to push it 
But if I would get just do git push, he would say, oh, he doesn't know which branch to push through. So as uh, written on the GitHub, we need to specify minus u and say that the origin is the master and then everything should work fine. And now it's pushed to our GitHub repository. If I reload it here right now, we can see my commit is there and the readme file is into it. So that's uh, the first step of Git or the first cool thing about the versioning control system is we have some kind of backup system which is now saved in our cloud. So we have our source code on the GitHub server and we also have it on our local machine. So if everything gets broken on your local machine, you know it's saved in the internet and you are fine, your source code is still there. This is the first advantage and the first thing why you should use Git. Of course, we could also do it with uh, some kind of a FTP service or something like that. Very old school to make a backup. But I will show you more advantages of Git in a minute. So what I wa now want to do is I would like to change my readme file, change this file. So I add some content. If I now use git status, he says to me, oh, this file has been modified and it's no longer synced with our repository. We have now the option to make git diff on this file, for example, and he will say, oh, look at this. This one has been changed. There is now new content, change this file. Okay, I would like to add this and I would like to commit it with uh, changed content of readme. And then I push it again to our server. And if we now look in our server, we have, first of all, we have the readme file right now with the content which is showed because the readme MD file is always taken as the readme for the GitHub. So you have always the readme right here. And of course we have the two commits right here. So you can see the first commit and another one. And if you click on that, you can also see the differences so that I have added this line. So this is the second advantage of our versioning control and of Git. We have a history over every change which was done to a single file. So you can always jump back to the history and see who has changed what and why. And you can also command here right now and you can also collaborate with your team and speak about different changes. So this is a huge thing if you're working with Git. You can, see, you can just see the complete history and you can just see all the changes. And also if you have broken something, you can go back to the past and recover it from your Git. So unlike um, an FTP service where you have always the newest files, with versioning control in Git, we have a complete history of all changes we have done. So you should always commit often. All your changes, every change you make, you should commit and not just gather everything together and make just one huge commit because then you leave uh, this history feature alone. Because if I just commit um, when I have done weekly work or something like that, then you have just one huge commit with a history of one week. So if you commit every day, for example, your history will be much better. And even so, what I like to do is I just do a commit per task. So um, I create myself, I have just a task like I would like to add uh, more speed to my main character. And if I have done that, I would like to commit it because then I have one single purpose of this commit and I have a better history. If you merge up too much uh, commits or you have too much changes in one commit, it could be very, very difficult to analyze what was uh, the right change or what broke stuff. So. My advice is commit often and make some smaller commits because they are much better for the history. There are also quite a lot of uh, guidelines or some rules for Git, for example, so how you should name your commit messages or whatsoever. So there are a lot in the internet and you can also look up quite a few and all. Every company has its own rules, so it's a uh, much as uh, coding guidelines, you have to define your own rules or use them from other guys and yeah, look what's working for you. So another topic is there are of course other uh, projects. Uh, as I said, there's also GitLab that I was uh, using before. So I was using GitLab at, for my first repositories, but uh, I switched uh, to Bitbucket. 
And there is one reason because I like to use all the Atlassian products in my in the studio because I have the Jira for my tickets, I have the Confluence for our wiki part and I use Bitbucket for our Git part. And uh, the reason for that is because they integrate very, very well together. So if you create a ticket in Jira, we can just create a branch in Bitbucket. Overall, it's working all the same Git in the background. So it's not important if you use GitHub or GitLab. It's always Git in the in the backbone, I would say. But it's just some uh, graphical stuff and yeah, UI, which I like a lot here in Bitbucket. So you, we can go through it and I show you it with a more advanced project. So the uh, FFC Shuffleboard is my current game development project. And here you can see that we have a lot of files. I have also a README file, which is uh, from Texture Packer Importer here. And um, yeah, with the README, you have the markdown stuff and you can always uh, put in your own README style. And then you have a README on this uh, first page shown up. Then you have your files here, of course. We can see the different commits I have made so far with the date, with the commit message and uh, the commit hash. We can always check out every command, uh, commit and go to the state of this one for example and if we click into it we can see all the changes we have made within this commit there are also some other options here on bitbucket we have a uh, pull request we have uh, <clears throat> we can view the source and stuff like that but it's not uh, very important for us right now yeah you could also work and get with different branches what that means is we take a state for, from the master branch for example and now we can develop in, in different directions for example so if you if you are unsure if you would like to use android or ios then you could do some different branches or you can check out them and then you can change code without destroying your stable state i would say it's the best way to describe it um, or if you would like to make some patches um, or you need some hot fixes it may be worth to create a branch and afterwards you can do a pull request someone can look over it and accept it for the branch and merge it all together yeah so what uh, else would i like to cover so yeah for uh, godot especially and this one is a godot project and on godot you can use git just as you would do so you just add your files and have the uh, all the uh, git related history for godot as well but the one thing i like to do for my godot projects is i like to add the import folder and uh, to my git ignore file because with that uh, we don't add all our import files to the repository because you want me to make sure that your repository is not too big and you ha have to be careful with your binary files such as source images or yeah, also uh, all the exported stuff for APK file, for example, or binaries, because they are quite big. And uh, if your repository gets too big, the download takes a lot of time and this is not good for your whole team. So make sure that your repository is always very, very small and just have all the source code files. Another thing is uh, in the source code files, you can see all the differences because it's just text and Git shows you all the different text stuff. If you have some changed images, you won't be able to see the difference because it's a binary file. Of course, you have the, uh, it is useful for images because you have also there the different states of the images, but you won't see the changes directly into Git you would have to check it out and then watch the image, for example. So I like to have a, a second repository for my images and one repository for my source files. But this is up to you. Yeah, so I hope you like this uh, very, very basic introduction to Git. If you have any questions about Git or you would like to see more detailed way to work with Git, yeah, or you have just some other questions, please make sure to drop them below the video. Leave a like if you like the video, upvote or if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of Godot tutorials this year. I have already a, a, a rough plan about my next topics. So uh, I will try to create a lot of videos and I hope to see you there. So see you within the next video. Bye.